Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for the segment, we have Fausto Puglisi, founder of Cyber Trading University, to discuss how to use NASDAQ Book Viewer to trade stocks and earnings and rallies in the market. Fausto, I, I think traders really are in deep need of another tool that they can <laughs> use. I mean, the volatility that we've seen, um, not just for the first week of May, but April in general, um, you know, you could decide if it's the bottom or not fundamentals, but the data tells you where the levels are. And I think traders can really use this tool. Well, with NASDAQ Trader, Jill, it's always been exciting to always tell everybody a little bit more about it. But yeah, it's becoming so much more handy more and more. But uh, yeah, I mean, we've been down almost, we were up almost a thousand. We're down a thousand. Now we're, da we're down again today. We were down a lot. We came back a little bit. But uh, yeah, there's been, we also had a lot of great earnings that did come out. And uh, NASDAQ Book Viewer definitely helped out a lot and definitely want to show a little bit about it to help uh, your audience to kind of use these tools because you're going to need them to trade in today's volatile market, especially knowing what's, what everything else is going on in the world. That is an understatement. Um, two stocks we're going to talk about today, Lyft and AMD. And AMD is always a good one. That's one of the most liquid, heavy volume stocks we have in the NASDAQ 100. But I want to start with Lyft. Let's take a look at some levels that you were watching there. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about Lyft. So anyway, Lyft, if you could see right here, had a very, very bad crash going into you know, with earnings and everything else. And you could see it that it really took a really nasty dive and it kind of stopped. Now, the big thing about People get nervous with earnings, everything else. It's like you're like wondering when do I get it? when do I get back in or maybe you're holding it. And Lyft took a really nasty uh, nasty turn from where the highs have gone public. And I just want to kind of show you a little bit more about regarding about Lyft. Now with the Nasdaq Book Viewer, what was awesome about this trade is you have to be patient, Jill. And and the audience has to understand that what drives these things up or down is you could use all the indicators you want, but we had a very very big big buyer that was on Lyft, and we just had to wait, wait patiently. So right there, if you notice, uh, we had a 146,000 buyer uh, right on the book viewer, right around $20. Now, some people look at those numbers and be like, oh, it's 20. Is that what it is? Or maybe 21. No, it's all about that big block order right there. Now, if you notice, um, waiting patiently, the next morning came in. Didn't do too well at 930. And then all of a sudden, the stock just literally just came crashing down. And it stopped specifically right around here. You could see it right around there. Let me get my little crayons to show what I'm talking about. Right there. You could see it. So this guy's been sitting out there. And there, and this right here is a big plus. There's about 36, 38 orders out there that make that 146,000 shares. And by having that patient and waiting and waiting right around 1030, Boom, look at that. Stock went right up to about $22. Nice little $2 move. And you know what? If you look in the bottom fish, which is my all-time favorite, right. there you go, how the NASDAQ book viewer helped you out on that trade. And Fausto, what's so interesting with this is, again, fundamentally, we can um, go back and forth about any stock, even when you look at the charts, too. Everyone can interpret charts differently. But this literally shows you where the orders are. It's really not open up for interpretation as much as fundamental or technical analysis may be. Well, that's exactly right, Jill. And most people keep focusing on the past and they keep looking at those indicators, but don't realize that, that you know what, we don't have crystal balls here, but how do things get driven up and down? It's, it's with those supply and demand, those buyers and sellers. And with the book viewer, like, and you know me for so many years, I've been using this since the day it came out. Um, it, nothing really has changed. This is how the exchange actually works. So if you, if some of you are out there and you're looking at a stock, you know, like you keep focusing with all these indicators, well, maybe it's time to focus on just using what NASDAQ offers you. And if you just saw those orders out, you would have been patient enough and you wouldn't have to chase. You wouldn't probably have to average down and you probably got it at that price because 146,000 shares is a lot of shares. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's take a look at AMD. Walk us through that. Sure. So let me let me change the slide here and bring up the next one and how it worked really well with AMD. So AMD, very popular stock. Another one, a lot of these high tech stocks are taking some major, major hits. So once again, people are looking at it. Where do I get in? Or um, or maybe one of the big things people look at is breakouts. So you'll notice that AMD had a really big, big seller sitting here at $95 a share. And not once, not twice, three times over the course of the day had a tough time breaking it. Now, AMD has been extremely volatile with everything that's happening in the market in the last couple of days. Well, what we need to focus on, people always ask, what about breakouts? Well, if you look over here on the NASDAQ Book Viewer, you had 157,000 shares. So you would think, in theory, big seller, big resistance, not going to break it. Well, 
If you look right here as the day went on, you can see at 1 o'clock, 1.30, 2 o'clock, it hit it once, twice, three, four, five times. Finally, someone actually bought those shares, and that caused a very, very big demand, and that stock went from $95, and you could see it in less than an hour. It ran almost $5 to $100 a share, um, all because somebody filled in that order, and you have to look at it on the book viewer. When you're seeing 200 shares, Jill, 500 shares, 2,000, but when you're talking a very subst substantial amount of shares out there being sold, and the guy gets executed, that's going to cause big demand, and that's how you get these big run-ups on these breakouts. All right, fast. So appreciate the insight as always. Thank you for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.